What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to a brand new News Roundup video. And today, we've got some very interesting stories to get into, starting off with Joker. Then we're going to go into the DCU, specifically with Superman. A leak, a rumor, a rumor, a leak, a rumor, rumor, rumor. We're going to get into this and kind of evaluate it because I find certain aspects of it really fascinating with what we've already heard, what we've already kind of gathered out there with Superman. Some parts where I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know, but then there's also a clue from Gunn himself way, 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 way back when, and it's kind of making me think, what if? So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about Joker 2 or Joker Folia 2. Now, as you guys know, We've been talking about, I think, my previous news roundup, how it was reported out there that the trailer would be releasing on April 9th. This adds up with what Todd Phillips said, and now <laughs> Todd Phillips has released a poster and said, trailer April 9th, this coincides with CinemaCon, as I've been saying. And I think quite a few people are clowning, no pun intended there, on this poster saying, it looks like a fan poster. And I'm just like, I mean... You know, I mean, I get it, like, the world's a stage, so you can see a little bit of a spotlight there coming down on Joker and Harleen Quinzel, or Harley Quinn. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion, but I, I, I kind of like it. It's simple, like, the, the, the freaking posters for the first movie, as you're seeing on screen right now, were pretty simple. Some people were saying that this one that you're seeing right now on screen is miles better than the fan-made poster for the second one. I'm just like, what? Like, okay, so an up-close picture of Joker, Joaquin Phoenix. I, I just don't, I don't get it. I'm, I'm not saying it's an amazing poster. I just, I just, okay. But either way, the one thing I do feel a little bit off about, you know, if we're going to get a bit nitpicky here, is the logo. I mean, I, I'm trying to dig what they're doing here. Now they've kind of added fully on the J and then ah uh, uh, between K and E and then D in the middle there. I guess they kind of just wanted to keep the slap brand of Joker in your face, but then just kind of put fully a do it in there to kind of just make it scream Joker. Hey, the first one was really popular. This one's still Joker, but I preferred the layout and where Fully Ado was underneath. But either way, nitpicks aside there, it's also basically a continuation, I guess, of the scene or the picture that Todd Phillips released to us previously and where you saw Arthur Fleck Joker dancing with Harleen Quinzel. It kind of looked like a stage background, if you will, kind of theatrical, which kind of fits in with some of the musical numbers that would be in this film. It's just that in this poster, we have Harleen Quinzel leaning back a little bit more compared to the one that you're now seeing on screen. And I kind of like the touch and how you can subtly see there's bricks in the background. You can actually see there's a barred window and where the spotlight for the world is a stage is coming from, somewhat inferring that this is them dancing in Arkham Asylum. Now, another really cool thing, and I don't know why they didn't post this everywhere like Todd Phillips and on Twitter and everything like that, but we have the first audio believe it or not, of Harley Quinn, Harleen Quinzel, from Joker 2 via the Joker movie TikTok page. So they basically showed a new poster, some various images that Todd Phillips has released for the second movie, and we hear Harleen Quinzel say, you can do anything you want. You're Joker. You can do anything you want. You're Joker. And you kind of have this, I, I think it's a harp, just kind of like a weird, delirious, you know, dreamy kind of um, harp kind of sound, you know. The okay, I doubt that was a terrible impression. But the point is, is this just an Arthur's head, you know, kind of this delusion of grandeur of just like Harleen saying, oh, you can do anything you want. You're Joker. And it's Arthur just, you know, with that sound effect, it kind of really does make you think that it is in his head. But then again, it really might not be because after all, we know that Harleen Quinzel is kind of crazy as well and kind of infatuated with the Joker. So maybe she kind of would say this without it having to be a dream sequence. I can speculate about what that line would mean all day, but I'm not really going to waste your time. But, you know, some people are nitpicking again, saying, that sounds nothing like Harley Quinn. You know, where's the, where's the Harley kind of Mr. J accent? And it's like, look, guys, come on now. Um, this is an Elseworlds movie. Granted, these are takes on Joker and Harley Quinn, but I, as a huge Joker and Harley Quinn fan, I'm not alienated by the fact that Lady Gaga kind of sounds like Lady Gaga then. You know, it's just... Do you know what I mean? Like, does this mean that Joaquin Phoenix has to sound like, I don't know, Mark Hamill's Joker? 
like yes or something. No, like he's just gonna talk like Arthur Fleck. Uh, either way, I don't I don't want to keep you know bitching about what people are bitching about. But actually, having said what people are bitching about, if you will, we have Lee Gill who wa was in Joker One, obviously respond to a fan who's you know kind of like oh, yeah, musical. Oh god, like what a lot of you are kind of like out there. Uh, so he says that's cool, dude. I'm sure once you see it, the musical elements of it will uh, make way more sense, and you'll absolutely absolutely love it. It's not musical. And this is what I've kind of been maintaining this whole time. Like, I, I, this has been reported, which is why I stuck with it, despite hearing the recent report of the 15 cover songs to the jukebox musical that it apparently is. But either way, you'll absolutely love it. It's not musical in the same way as, like, Oliver or something. Trust me. Uh, with Todd, Joaquin, and the exact same team as the first one behind it all again, you're in very safe hands. And I think that's what I've been trying to say. I, I guess despite how many, you know, more musical numbers would be in it than what I initially thought, I've heard and it's been reported for the past couple of years that it would still not be like in the heights or, you know, as he's saying here, Oliver, it would still feel very Joker 1 with the Joker scenes of just dialogue, the dramatization. But you are going to have a lot of, obviously, from what we're hearing in recent reports, up to 15 cover songs, maybe one or two original Lady Gaga written songs. But despite that, guys, I'm still really hyped. And I, it's going to be funny if this isn't the case. But with this poster coming out, seeing people's comments on it, and knowing that the trailer is just around the corner, make sure you subscribe. Double check that you are actually subscribed because a lot of you tell me that you're not subscribed when you think you are because my videos just appear on your homepage. <sighs> make sure you subscribe for the breakdown video. But seriously, I'm waiting for the switch up. That's what I was going to say. Um, and again, it's going to be funny because what if people don't switch up? And what I mean by that is people switching up to be like, oh, damn. I really wasn't looking forward to this. I said it didn't need a sequel, but this looks sick from the trailer. But it could end up the other way and people might be like, lol, I said this would be shite and look at this piece of shite. Why did we need this? But I don't know. Fingers crossed for people to finally start seeing the vision that I have been vibing Hopefully. All right, so up next in Superman rumors. Now, this one is very intriguing to me, and a lot of you have been tagging me in this. And what I had noticed is that I could have spoken about this in a previous news roundup, but what, I'm, what I mean to say is that this has actually been teased for, I, I think, by scoopers for like the past week, give or take, but now more and more is coming out. So I do want to stress that this is a rumor. Take it with a huge grain of salt, but I've done quite a bit of research, quite a bit of uh, looking into this and also kind of, you know, connecting it with the popular theories out there for Superman, even connecting it back to a teaser of which James Gunn put out there, which, you know, may be reaching, but that's for you to decide. And for all I know, James Gunn, by the time of making this video, or should I say posting it, he could have debunked it on threads, but uh, whether that happens or not, nod I still want to get my thoughts out there because again a lot of you are tagging me and want me to talk about this and I want to talk about it anyway because even though I don't think every detail about this kind of stuff is going to be absolutely spot on I do feel like you know there is a bit of smoke behind the fire sometimes when it comes to things like this if you will so there there have been you know, you know, little teasers like this, even DC Film News got involved here. You know, there's Superman, there's some cloned Supermans in the background there. And they were uh, quote tweeting Daniel RPK. And he said James Gunn Superman to an image of Superman for the quest for peace. Now, this was posted on April 1st, but I have heard that RPK was being low-key serious about that and you'll see how this ties back into uh the rumor here with regards to superman the quest for peace and nuclear man and whatnot but then there's other scoopers we can we get some toast saying some interesting details for james gunn superman are now live for my subscribers um and then we have uh other pages just other pages going over this now i'm sure you're just like boba what the hell are you on about here well let's break this down and again here by the way daniel rpk rewatching this amazing film for no reason once again i do want to acknowledge posted April 1st. I mean, I guess there's an inbuilt deniability there that if this scoop doesn't turn out to be true, uh, certain scoopers could be like, well, I posted this on April 1st. But again, uh, this rumor exceeds just April 1st, just to make that very, very, very clear. It's not just something that was just posted on April 1st. But here we have this page saying, according to the well-known, um, can we get some toast? Lex Luthor would create a clone of Superman in James Gunn's film, and it would be Ultraman. And he would also be played by David Corrinsweet. Again, some other scoopers have been saying that David Corrinsweet 
on Sweat for a while now. We'll be playing uh, two characters. This character is, and this is where it might be confusing to some of you, and this is what I'm about to get into. The character obviously is known for leading the Crime Syndicate, a counterpart group to the Justice League, and the rumor was first said by the Geeky Cast. Now, the Geeky Cast here said yesterday, I believe, um, in this exclusive, we are going to reveal several new features about Superman, so it will probably end up being a thread. Uh, thank you and give us some love. So Lex Luthor is the villain of this movie, but he's not the only villain. What I'll isolate about that is as expected. I don't think he's going to be the singular villain. I think the engineer is going to be poised as a villain, even though by the end of the movie, it will do some kind of full circle moment where she becomes the anti-hero, more or less, that we know and love from the authority. So they go on to say this time Lex is not a physical threat to Superman. Here he plays more of a scientist and businessman realm. Okay. Uh, we have confirmed of our sources that the other villain is created by Lex Luthor, hence Lex's scientific part in the movie, but they have not confirmed who he is. Now, we assume it may be Bizarro, but we have no confirmation of this, so we don't want to lie. Fair enough, but as what we are gathering from other scoopers out there, it could be an Ultraman-esque thing. Again, more on that in a second, because I get it. Ultraman, wait, what? From a, and Kal-El from another Earth? Crime Syndicate? Wait, how does this fit in here? We will be hinted at Brainiac in this movie, but as a nod to what will come in the future. By the way, separately here, that is what I would want, because I don't want Brainiac to be a one-punch villain. I've said this whole time and what I mean by a one punch villain is introduced as the big bad of Superman legacy and defeated in Superman legacy I think he could even you know be you know as powerful enough to be a chapter one villain so to be hinted at Brainiac or as some kind of impending doom coming that more heroes could have to face you know collectively I would favor that. Jarrell appears in the movie as a hologram in the Fortress of Solitude. All right. Mr. Terrific, Hawkgirl, Metamorpho, and Guy Gardner will confront Superman at one point in the film due to moral differences. Superman has only been a superhero for a short time, so there is still no trust between them. This kind of plays into what we've been, we've been saying for a while in terms of the theories out there with what if this world, as we know, it's not what if, actually. I want to stress this is all coming under theories that I and others have said. With the Kingdom Come-esque environment that we've been hearing is a big influence on this film with James Gunn saying this is a you know a world in where superheroes have existed for a long last time they don't just exist but they have existed now there could be a point in where heroes are regulated via I don't know if you want to say Waller is there or some kind of government sanctioned thing maybe that could lead to the early proto authority and that's why the engineer is in this film perhaps she's initially equipped but then later says F you to whoever it is and then starts up her own group the authority I know that's not really the backstory there behind that character but do you see what i mean like regulated heroes to an extent and i guess under the umbrella of heroes forgetting what heroes once were in the dc universe and now becoming this kind of um i don't know if you want to say misguided but kind of a shell of what the very mentors they are meant to be upholding are today or what they you know once used to be so maybe he really is rubbing some people the wrong way with regards to the way he is asserting his heroic actions right and this is where the whole luther thing could come in as well because obviously if he is you know uh maybe somehow been involved in the overarching kind of um I don't know, regulation of heroes to a certain extent. The disdain that he must have built up for Superman by now because of what Superman is doing outside the confines of what he obviously likes, and that is control. Luther likes being in control. They go and say, we'll get a look at Supergirl in the movie, and this will tie into Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. That is something I'm like willing to place money on. I mean, I could be wrong, obviously, but I've been saying that for a long time. Makes sense to kind of backdoor pilot, if you will, Millie Alcock in there, especially Clark has been raised on Earth since a baby. Granted, he is obviously a Kryptonian, but he's got way more kind of, uh, you know, he's been raised as a human. Millie Alcock, I think it would be really good to see her Kara, who has arrived on Earth not so long ago. Uh, we, we still don't really know when she arrived on Earth or if that's going to happen in the movie like some people speculate, but I think she would have been on Earth prior to the events of Superman the movie. But she's obviously really kind of displaced in a sense. She's not used to the human culture and this and the other, and Clark has been helping her. That's my headcanon of how things could be going for now. Let, let's focus in on the clone situation here, and this is where I'm going to kind of tie in what James Gunn himself teased about Lex Luthor. This is where I would say that, okay, you know, adaptations aren't copy and paste. Now, I know some people would be like, I really don't like this. I'm not saying I like it. I'm just saying everyone needs to understand that even if they did Bizarro or something like that, or Ultraman in this sense, you know, sometimes movies actually 
do a rendition of a character or a villain in this in this example here and actually borrow from similar villains in the same universe's back, background or, you know, lore, if you will, and kind of merge them into one. So I guess in this case here, you know, you may think that, okay, if Lex is cloning Superman, but instead it's actually Ultraman. And my main point here is that even though Ultraman is an alternate Clark from uh, the Crime Syndicate, which is like an evil version of the Justice League, just in case you're not aware, he's not going to come over from a different universe. This clone will have, I guess, been created to be somewhat the opposite of Superman. So I guess you can say that's where the Ultraman vibes come in but you can also chuck in some Bizarro vibes there as well maybe or that's the only thing I'm trying to kind of paint a picture of where James Gunn could arguably create a clone but also draw inspirations from Ultraman Bizarro um, and several other kind of iterations of when Luther has done things like this in the source material before, which is why I guess you could say uh, the quest for peace comes into it because of Nuclear Man, right? With how, you know, um, the nuclear weapon with Superman's DNA on it, you know, exploded and then freaking all of a sudden Nuclear Man pops up if you don't know already. Uh, and that's that's a whole wild plot there for Superman 4. For all we know, those could be just the inspirations if we hypothetically entertain if these leaks Slash rumors are true and the clone of Clark that Nicholas Holtz Luther creates might not even be called Ultraman. So the James Gunn connection here now it's very small and I'm going quite reachy here but when James Gunn finally acknowledged and posted this photo with Nicholas Holt and acknowledged him as Lex Luthor the casting he left these emojis of which I said was always very very damn interesting. So obviously you have the DNA sequence there and then a couple of other emojis to do with, you know, uh, laboratory stuff, right? The use of emojis there is very interesting. Now, it, you, you can't really go too far with it. I mean, we kind of like to go too far on this channel because, you know, it just it could just signify, hey, Lex Luthor, right? You know, businessman, but maybe they've got to go a bit more into if this could be inferring the, the science-y version of Lex. And as we know, you know, cloning, DNA sequence, Superboy, God knows what else. But now maybe we could take that post from back then, link it to this rumor and be like, well, Gunn did post that DNA sequence when welcoming... Uh, one of his very favorite characters in the DCU, as he says here. Anyway, here's to Lex, one of my very favorite characters in the DCU. DNA emoji, freaking science emoji, and then another science emoji. What if, what if, what if it could be going this direction? Now, this also could link to other things as well. For example, let's ask ourselves, why would Lex clone Superman? So again, this maybe comes back into the Kingdom Come climate, the potential somewhat regime, if you will, of how metahumans and heroes and vigilantes are handled for the most part. There's a certain control in place. And with Superman arguably being one of, if not the most powerful hero out there, he would be getting especially a lot of press attention and raising the eyebrows of those powers that be, even in the shadows, that are very concerned about how dangerous these beings can be, these people can be. And if there is one of them, that is not really doing things by their rule book. That would be frustrating because you would be worried if they're not listening or doing or following orders of how to handle things, then they can do anything they want. What could they be capable of? That's why we like to reel heroes in. But this very thing that Superman is doing and tackling things his own way is symbolic of um, a potential issue and people might take issue with that and again Luther having a lot of issue with not being in control might not really like that now this could obviously you know wrap up with how you know there's the plot details that we heard of and this is like everywhere by the way you know for example when we heard that Basim Yusuf um you know was let go from his role in Superman and it's tied to that Middle Eastern plot and he was going to play a Middle Eastern dictator but now apparently new rumors well they're not new but they came out a little while ago around about the time that story broke quite quite a bit of news that instead of the Middle Eastern plot it's now moved to uh, a conflict in Europe somewhere. So the thing is, if, if Lex Luthor would create a clone of Superman, one that is somewhat Ultraman-esque, right? So kind of evil Superman. Well, you could argue that he could, and there's rumors out there, be flying out there to cause a bunch of shite with how that's being handled, this conflict, and frame and blame Superman, like the good Superman, our Superman, David Cornswit Superman, 
for being the one to stir up all this crap, right? Uh, whereas really it's this creation that Lex Luthor um, has, you know, dispatched over there. Now, I know this kind of sounds wild, and I do admit, like, guys, we are ki quite literally painting animals in the sky right now with this speculation with how it can link. But you never know. You never know. If Superman's becoming a bit of a pain in the ass in Lex Luthor's own backyard, then maybe he's going to try and bring more stigmatization and, you know, reasons as to exactly why. Hey, just like me, Lex Luthor, why you shouldn't like this Superman. See, look, look what he did when really Clark didn't do this at all. I don't know, though. Again, all of this could be complete BS. But the James Gunn post, even though it is kind of fitting his teaser there with those emojis to this whole theory to fit this narrative... I can't be sure of that. It is kind of like a cool thing to imagine, right? As I said earlier in this video, I think there's grains of like almost teases or like smoke behind the fire somewhere with how I do think in this movie, a bit of the story will surround how there are heroes that operate within the confines of what this new world is. Heroes have been around for a long time, like decades and decades, probably JSA days in the 20th century, way before that hundreds of years, clearly, uh, with characters like Cersei and stuff from Creature Command. Like, this this universe is living and breathing, guys. We're hitting the ground running, as I keep saying. Um, but I think by the 2020s, things have somewhat become... Heroes operate within the confines of whatever this, you know, how they should operate because there's been too many disasters before potentially. So when you have this new Superman operating outside what is um, typical for heroes, you're going to piss people off. And I think that's going to be in it. Now, decorating all of this extra rumory stuff, we're going to have to wait and see. How do I feel about the idea of the cloning thing? I don't know. I've got a feeling some people's knee-jerk reaction to this will be like, I hate this. Some people might be like, okay, what if you're doing this? Why not just do Bizarro? Another thing is, um, anyway, like, how does Lex get the DNA? Are they going to technically, I don't know, connect uh, Bloodsport shooting Superman? And maybe that's how there is DNA of David Corrin Sweat's um, Superman. Because James Gunn did say that there would be, uh, you know, certain tethers of some continuity and canon from the DCEU that is maintained. That's if this is true. I know I keep talking like, you know, Boba, what, do you believe this? No, it's just when I talk about rumors like this, I like going in with the mindset while entertaining the discussion of hypothetically, as I always say, uh, entertaining if it's true because it kind of helps you like live the possible reality of that being a thing um, but then when I zoom back out it's like okay where are we at with this and um, I think it all depends on how it's executed I know people's knee-jerk reactions is gonna be this sounds crap oh my god this you know I've already seen some people say this sounds like BVS wait what how does this sound like BVS? Okay, so Lex creates a clone. Lex, but, but like, is this clone Zod? Is he going to turn into Doomsday? No, no. It, where's Batman? Like, how, what, is Batman going to, to do? Like, do you know what I mean? Um, so if there is actually any truth to this cloning thing, I will have to wait. That's one thing I do stress. Like, wait to see it before judging. Now, you can form, okay, well, I, you know, I'm a bit unsure about the concept of this. That's fine. But I think it matters truly on how it's executed. I think what would surprise me about this is that it would subvert my initial expectations of how much of a history Lutheran, Clark, or Superman in this case would have. Because if he's gone as far or to the length of cloning Superman to maybe, you know, uh, stigmatize and frame Superman and gain back control from, you know, Superman operating outside the norm of what has been upheld for so many years and so many heroes have fallen under. What I'm trying to say is Superman and Luther, before the events of the Superman, James Gunn Superman movie, must have some history. Now, we do know he's been active for a while. He's an established hero. So that could make sense. I just thought during Superman, in my mind, all while Luther would be aware of Superman, just like the world is, because again, he's an established hero, just not a veteran, not an origin. I thought the disdain for Superman in Luther's mind would be developed. Maybe not begun in this movie, but like he might not like him, but by the end of this movie, he will really want to take him down. But if he's already, let's just say this is true, actually cloning Clark to do whatever with that clone, he must have already really not liked Superman for some time by the time the movie even picks up. Do you know what I mean? To even, you know, uh, got to the point of trying to clone Superman for 
whether it is something to do with the theories of what I said earlier, going over to the Middle East, causing a bunch of bad press for Superman to then redirect the public and other heroes to try and maybe take Superman out. I can talk about this all day, all night, ladies and gentlemen. Again, maybe it's already been debunked by Gunn by the time I post this, but those are my thoughts on a plot like that anyway. You know, one thing I will say is, and I'm not saying this is the outright case, but even if Gunn debunks this, it could have been debunked in the sense that whoever he replies to labels or explains it in such a way that he he debunks it. But I want to stress that doesn't technically mean that there wouldn't really be any grains of truth to it. But he's just strictly not lied because he's debunked it in the way it was presented. If you're still with me there. So an example of that could be when he denied that there was a Middle Eastern plot to the movie, right? Or like a conflict in the Middle East or something like that. Technically, he didn't lie because that was no longer a part of the story. But then it came out with the whole Bassem Yusuf story no longer being attached to Superman. Uh, we found out from him detailing that he was playing a character, a dictator in the Middle East. There's going to be a conflict in the Middle East. So do you see what I mean? Like, uh, even if there's a debunk, whoever he replies to it will make me wonder if there's still something to this. Because, you know, a lot of scoopers are coming out the woodwork and being pretty adamant about this one. So I don't know, guys. Let me know your thoughts about that. Uh, maybe we can talk a little bit more about this in the discussion series because I have an episode of that coming out very, very soon. But that is everything I want to talk about today. I uh, can't wait to read everything you've got to say, especially with my most rambly parts of the video. Would really appreciate a like on this video. It just lets YouTube know, hey, people are watching this guy's video. Maybe we're going to promote it out to some new people who may convert over to the Boba Talks channel. And if you haven't done so already, do check that subscribe button because you might not actually be subscribed, as I teased earlier, when a lot of you think that you might be. But until next time, guys, gonna love you and leave you. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.